In this video, I wanna break down a few things that I've learned the hard way. Five reasons why most people quit coding and honestly, why it almost has nothing to do with the skill of coding. So whether you've just started learning or you've been grinding for months and you feel like you're getting nowhere, this video is for you. Now, I think I've been through this long enough now to see the patterns in myself, but also in the comments, you know, in the DMs, in the conversations that I've had with a lot of other self-taught programmers. And the thing is most people quit because their expectations are wrong. And it starts with this. Reason number one, you think progress means visible results. Most people think that they're not making any progress because they can't see it. You know, no flashy portfolio to show off just yet. They haven't got a working app. There's no job offer. There's no visible outcome to show for all the hours that they've been putting in. And that really messes with your head, right? Because we've been conditioned to believe that you know your effort it needs to equal these kind of instant rewards you study you pass the test you go to the gym you see the muscles developing but that's not the same with programming in programming the progress is invisible you know sometimes it's very subtle it's not what you build it's how you think yeah you know, for example you might be googling or, or whatever for your answer but you know what you're looking for you might be stuck but at least you're stuck on better problems. You ultimately start recognizing patterns better. You know, you're debugging faster. You're less scared to break things. Coding progress is not linear. You have these ups and obviously you have a lot of downs, but over time it just compounds. It looks like nothing is kind of happening on the surface, but underneath suddenly you start working on these projects and you know what you're working on. You know what you're building. You know how to do certain things that you couldn't do before. There's this quote that I really like from James Clear and it says, you don't rise to the level of of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. And so when you keep showing up, you keep showing up, you keep coming back to it, even without visible wins, those systems start stacking up over time, you know, kind of like laying bricks. Every tutorial, you know, every, every program that you build, every bug that you fix, for example, every time you read the documentation even, that's one little brick that you're laying. You might not be able to see the house, the entire house just yet, but if you stop laying bricks just because it doesn't look like a house, you'll never have a house, right? You're essentially measuring the wrong things. We tend to measure progress in things that we can screenshot, you know, like working projects, for example. But I think there's a better way to measure it, right? And that is, are you more patient with how you were a month ago? Are you writing code without checking the solution immediately? Are you spending more time in you know, your code editor than you are on YouTube or on Google, for example? So if you are learning to code, if you are learning to program, you need to redefine what progress looks like. Sometimes it's not a finished product. Sometimes it's the fact that you just didn't quit this week. So yeah, the message is every time you open your editor, every time you, I don't know, write a for loop, uh, every time you try again, a new brick is laid. And even though it's not like visual, you are making progress. And this takes me to reason number two, and that is you're afraid of building the wrong thing. Now this one's tricky, right? Because on the surface, it looks like procrastination or just being not sure where to start. But the reality is you're afraid, right? You're afraid that you'll waste your time, that you'll build something that no one cares about, uh, that it won't be impressive enough. So instead of actually building something, you build nothing. But I can tell you now being part of this community, every great developer built something wrong first. And look, let's be honest, you're probably holding back yourself because you think your idea has to be original. But originality is overrated, especially at the start. Now I know I've spoken about having something original to work on, but when you're beginning, you just have to get going. So it's okay to rebuild that e-commerce site, you know, or to clone uh, clone a calculator to remix someone else's app. The goal here isn't to like impress anyone. It's to train your brain to just get in the reps uh, to become someone who builds. Nobody builds their first project and thinks, you know, that's it, I've done it. Uh, that's my magnum opus, I've smashed this one. That just doesn't happen. So don't worry about building the perfect thing, just build it. Because if you're still sitting there and waiting for the perfect project to fall from the sky, I'm sorry to tell you that it just won't. The only way to know what to build is to just build something. Even if it's wrong, like even if it's ugly, even if it even if it goes nowhere, what you'll see is that it was never really about building the perfect project. It's about becoming the kind of person who just builds anyway. And that takes me to, to reason number three why people quit programming. And that is that they want the results, but they're not taking the right action to attaining those results. So what I mean is a lot of people say that they wanna become a developer. They want, you know, the income, the freedom, the flexibility, whatever it is. But when it comes down to it, they don't want to take the responsibility for what it actually takes to get there. Because responsibility means changing. It means becoming 
someone or taking on certain habits that are different to who you are right now. And most people don't want to do that. You know, and this resistance, it shows up in two major ways. Number one is they don't want it bad enough to change their life. They start learning to code, start learning to program, and maybe they even get through a few tutorials, a couple of courses, but the pain of pushing through this discomfort of building new habits, you know, of thinking differently, of sticking to the hard stuff just isn't greater than the pain of staying the same. And you know, sometimes that's fine. Not everyone wants to, to go all in, to change. But if you do, if you say you want the outcome, then your actions need to reflect that outcome. And so you have to look at who is you know, successful and what they're doing uh, and just work back from that and repeat those actions. And the second resistance to change is the fear of what responsibility might reveal. What I mean is that taking responsibility means that obviously you might fail and then there's no one else to blame but you. But the truth is if you're afraid to fail, you are rejecting the very thing that makes learning possible in the first place because failure is the path. There's no skipping it. There's this great quote from Coco Chanel that says, success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. So successful people don't treat failure like a threat. They treat it like fuel. So the sooner you stop waiting to feel like quote unquote ready, the better off you'll be. And yes, of course, yeah, failure sucks, right? I don't, I don't like it either. I've failed more times than I can count learning to program and I'm still failing and I don't think that's gonna change. But the key is that it's part of the process. You have to embrace it and you have to understand that you are not your thoughts, you are the thinker of your thoughts. So when your mind is saying that this is not for you, you're not good enough, you don't have to believe it. You can just acknowledge it. You can, you can say, okay, that's great and just keep going anyway. And that's what taking the right action towards becoming a developer is really all about. And then reason number four is you think getting a job happens only one way. Now, where most people think about getting their job in tech, they picture just one path, right? You learn to code, you build a portfolio, you send out cold applications, and eventually a company just says, yep, that's it, great, come work for us. It's a story that I've definitely been sold, you know, I'm sure you've been sold on it as well. And it, yes, it does happen, but it's not the only way. The fact is treating it like it's the only way to get hired is one of the biggest things probably holding you back. Because the truth is there are multiple doors into this industry. Some people, you know, land a job through cold applications, yes, it's possible. But some people just get discovered on LinkedIn. Some people just DM the founder of a company, they, they end up working a freelance work for them and then it turns into a full-time role. Some people just post their projects online and they get noticed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many ways and all of these ways do work. The problem isn't which method you pick, it's that most people try everything for two weeks, they get discouraged and then they just stop. They apply for five jobs, maybe post once on LinkedIn, maybe write a blog post or maybe even record a video and then nothing happens and they say, see, you know, it doesn't work, but it does work, right? You just didn't give it enough time. You don't need to do everything. You don't need to be on every single platform, post every single day, apply for 50 million jobs a week. What you need to do is you need to pick two or three of these ways that fit your style of applying for work or applying for jobs and just execute on them consistently. Cold applications work if you're persistent. LinkedIn works, you know, if you engage and if you're not just kind of lurking around. Content works if you keep showing up and keep creating content. Referrals work if you build, you know, real relationship, not just cold DMing complete strangers and asking to work for them. Getting hired isn't necessarily about being visible, it's just about being persistent, you know, being willing to stay in the game longer than most people do. You don't need a perfect plan, you just need one that is repeatable and that works. And the final reason is that you think your biggest battle is the code, but really it's not, right? The real battle is actually with yourself. It's with your thoughts, it's with your doubts, it's with your expectations. It's with that freaking annoying little voice that, that kind of whispers to you, you know, you should be better by now. Uh, everyone else is ahead of you. Maybe, maybe you're just not, you know, maybe this is just not for you. The, the truth is yes, writing code, it is very difficult. It is hard. But I would say that dealing with these thoughts that come while you are learning to code, dealing with those are a lot harder to overcome because your brain, it just wants certainty. It wants to know that this is all gonna work out, that the effort will pay off, but programming doesn't give you that, unfortunately. <laughs> and that's what takes most people out because you don't just need the technical skills, you need the endurance, you need the mental endurance. You need to know that confusion is normal, that you know struggle is progress, and that you're not falling behind, you're just doing something hard. The battle isn't against the code, the battle is staying calm when the code doesn't work and staying in the game when your brain tells you to quit. And that's what separates real programmers who make it from those that you know ultimately walk away. 
It's never really been about the code. It's about the programmer who keeps showing up anyway, regardless of what's happening. So anyway, that's it. If you wanna learn some other really cool stuff, you should check out this video right here. I'll see you in the next one.